Yo, bro. Yo, what y'all doing? What you doing, bro? What's up, cuz? Oh, oh man. What's up, cuz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why haven't we seen China Mac on the like, TV oh, okay. in recent memory? All right, this story. So from what I understand, you've been kind of telling a version of the story I've been on your podcast. A version, a, my version. Your sure. version? Okay. So so uh, China Mac, we put him on his first ever mm -hmm. interviewer interview. Uh, how'd you meet him? Uh, through my son. Okay. So, so my son was like, hey, I got this friend named China Mac, he just got out of prison. He was involved in a shooting incident with Jin. Right. And um, he wants to do an interview, and he's willing to talk about that shooting incident. Mm. So I said, okay, well, I know Jin personally, actually. Um, I met him at an Andrew Yang rally. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I met him, oh my God, when I was moving to New York to be a DJ, like on the plane, where he was like the, the hot 106 in Park battle rapper. Like a Rough Rider days. Yeah, hmm. maybe, maybe even before that. No, oh. I, no, actually, no, you're right. No, it was, it was Rough Rider days. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so he came in to tell that story, and the interview did big numbers. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this was around the time that I was really kind of playing around with the concept of, you know, I had repeat guests, but none of them were sort of like in the, more in the gangster genre. Mm. So I was like, I remember I hit him up, and I was like, uh, hey, do you want to do another interview? But this time I want to talk, I don't really want to talk about the gin incident, I want to talk about kind of like how the, the Chinese mafia works in New York and everything else like that. He's like, yeah, I'm willing to talk about that. So we did another interview and that interview did really well. And I think from that interview, from those two interviews, that sort of got him into Doing, doing his every own, other interview, yeah, making doing his own a lot concert, of other interviews. Yeah. You know, he he had his own podcast at one point. Mm -hmm. I remember I went out to Queens and and sat in and did his interview, and uh, I would have him on my podcast, and I would actually pay him as a repeat guest. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we had a very respectful relationship and, and everything else like that. So he hit me up and it was like, "Yo, I want you to do my podcast," and I'm like, "Sure, I got you." You know, didn't, didn't, didn't charge him anything or whatever else. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, I mean, I understand it's a smaller platform and they don't have the same type of money that we do. So I was like, cool, I got you. And he, I'm like, where's it going to be at? He's like, oh, in downtown LA. All right, cool. And I was like, you know, do I need to bring security with me? Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, no, no, absolutely not. It's just going to be us two in, in just a little private room. This is not a studio. You know, if it was like a public studio or a place where I know a lot of people come through, I would always bring security. Like, you know, I have security with me right now. Mm -hmm. But he's like, no, 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 it's just a little private, little private apartment, and it's just going to be us two. Um, so don't don't bring security. So I was like, all right, cool. So, <laughs> and he was like, oh, and it's going to be live. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this is a little different. I don't do live stuff really ever, but me and him have a history, so I'm down. So cool, I'll do it. So... We're doing the interview, and then um, I hear some noise, and you know you see all this in the video that surfaced the same night. Mm. A couple of guys came in arguing in the background. You know they they walked past us behind the camera, and they're arguing. The argument is getting more and more loud, and then one of them's like, "Yo, I'm about to go get or something, some, some some like that," and I'm just like. If you see the video, I put my hands in my pockets. Right. Because I had something on me mm -hmm. at the time. Right. And this thing is escalating behind me, and I'm not, I mean, it seems real. Yo, bro. Yo, what y'all doing? What you doing, bro? What's up, cuz? Oh, man. What's up, cuz? Yo, hey, yo. Yo, 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 hey, yo, Vlad. You been pranked. <laughs> you been pranked, Vlad! You got pranked, Vlad! Thank you, bro. How you doing? 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 You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I don't know either of these two guys. I don't know whether this is about to spill over into me. And I'm on live right now. So every single thing that's happening right now is now being recorded by somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. And that's just sort of affected our business relationship to a certain degree. 
Um, but, you know, may, maybe the future will hold something different. Who, who knows? Mm. Uh, I have no idea. But at this time, this is why you haven't seen China Mac uh, on the platform. And, um, you know, going trying to go viral isn't always, you know, always isn't always the best strategy. And, and you kind of have to work things out in your head. You have to work out the whole story. Another one bites the dust. China Mac and Didi Vlad are no longer on speaking terms. And the reason why is because China Mac pranked him and now Vlad is big mad. So if you don't know, DJ Vlad is a sensitive guy and he refuses to talk to China Mac right now. So this is yet another failed business relationship of DJ Vlad. And right now we can include China Mac with the roster of Joe Buttons, Royce the 59, My Son, Lord Amar, and so many more. So I want to know what y'all think about this. Make sure to leave a comment, like this video, and watch the next videos.